Hi, everybody, and thank you for being here listening to my keynote. For those of you who are new in the XRPL ecosystem, welcome. It's great to have you here. I'm Vitze, the founder of XRPL Labs, mind the L for Ledger, not the token, but the Ledger. And we've been building uh, software libraries, fun projects and products on the XRP Ledger for XRPL users, developers, and hopefully uh, retail. So after some playing around with the uh, XRP ledger, realizing that the correct, uh, co characteristics of the XRPL allow for use cases beyond the crypto space, uh, Ali, Tristan and I decided to found XRPL Labs in the Netherlands in 2018, doing nothing but building out our vision for end users, developers and retail interaction to meet up and build on the XRP ledger. So now four years later, there are 16 of us and some of us moved with their families from the other side of the world to the Netherlands to join the team and some of us work remotely. But um, we, we all love what we're doing every day and great things happen when that's, uh, when that's the case. So what we're doing full time, all of us, is building our flagship product and platform, SUM, and everything around SUM and the XRPL. So there's lots of developer engagement, tooling, support, retail partnerships, compliance stuff, sharing knowledge, name it. Uh, and of course, very good end user support because it's the end users uh, who eventually will have to use the products being built on top of the ledger. So while we're still working on all of these things, our primary focus was to address the chicken egg problem. So users are waiting for developers to build cool stuff. Developers are waiting for end users to try their, uh, their, their cool projects. And then there's retail either waiting out or uh, looking what's happening in the space, dipping their toes in it, but not really building things where uh, the XRPL is really the core technology powering their products or end user interactions. So we realized that most of the real life interactions uh, to exchange value, to send value, uh, start with someone requesting something from someone else. So we're talking about pool interactions pool payments instead of push payments. And if you look at what crypto wallets are doing today, that's mostly push if, if you're talking about payments, where the user initializes something and then they're sending something to somewhere. But in the real world, it's the other way around. Um, so let's say you're building something cool, a game, an e-commerce com environment, uh, a, a platform, a store, and you want the end user to sign in and then pay for something. Um, you want the end user to provide a cryptographic signature to kick off a sign-in or a transaction on the XRP ledger on the blockchain. And that's exactly what we've been building. We've been building uh, that what's being, being used by most XRPL devs in the space today. We build a secure and user-friendly application and a platform for developers. So SUM is not just a wallet, it's a platform making it really easy for developers and end users to interact, to find each other and to initiate from the perspective of the developer a pool interaction. And we, in the meantime, keep everything secure and provide support to the end users. So what powers an amazing tool or platform or app leveraging the good things of the XRPL? So you most likely build a front end, a web page, a web app, a mobile app, a hybrid app, single page web app, SPA, name it, or it can be a store, a game, a gallery, a toolkit, an existing project that wants to request a payment, mint something, interact with the end user after authorizing them. And your application may have a backend, but may have because maybe you're building client side only there's always a backend in your project if you build on the xrpl uh because that's 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 the, the that's the ledger that's the core technology powering everything so you may build a client side only web app but the backend refers to much more than what you may or may not be building if you look at the architecture of the entire application the most important backend is the blockchain itself the xrpl so whether you are running your own node or connecting to a public node or a public cluster, there is always the XRPL as a single source of truth when it comes to identity, value, balances, tokens and NFTs held. So where does the responsibility lie to keep the keys of the end user safe? Where does security in the sense of key management belong? Who will the end user trust? So yeah, the, the end user will obviously trust the blockchain, the XRPL, because that's the technology they're working with, 
uh, but, but this cool new app that you worked on for months, will users trust it? Will users trust you as a developer, your application? Do you want the responsibility of keeping your savings, the savings of the end users safe? Are there legal implications? And if the private key in a crypto space is the most important thing a user possesses because it accesses all their funds and things they hold on the chain, um, hence it's a private key, would you even ask the user at some stage using your application to enter one? So key portability is amazing, but how do you prevent everyone from having to port their secret with all the risks involved? So there may be risks in the form of exploits or submodules you use in your code and knowing what's uh, under the hood in those modules. Or there may be key loggers on the client side, users' devices or browser may be compromised. And this is exactly what we fixed for developers, for end users with some. So early on, we made an important, very important actually decision, and it's still being asked every now and then. Um, do you provide a client for on the desktop a browser plugin? We don't. We build some as an app, mobile only. This is safer. Mobile phones are usually uh, better equipped with hardware security features like secure enclaves, face ID, fingerprint. They're less easy to fake because a browser plugin may, may be faked by overlaying an existing web page with a fake wallet interface and users can be tricked into all kinds of things. And phones are also being kept more personal. A browser tab is easily, easily left open. A mobile phone is carried on you. And most importantly, um, browser plugins are the things geeky early adopting crypto people may use. But if we're aiming for uh, future expansion of use cases on the XRPL, if we're talking about retail users, the masses, still to adopt this technology, they won't use a browser plugin. And there are even countries where owning a smartphone is very common while owning a desktop or a laptop isn't. So we built a mobile app and a mobile app only. And your private keys are stored safely encrypted on your phone, the thing most private. And user keys don't belong in the browser, if you ask us, except if you're playing around and having fun on the ledger. And I think it's really important to have those tools in this creative phase. In the long run, I don't think keys belong in a browser or a database uh, or the individual applications interacted with. Keys shouldn't have to be ported to different applications by having end users enter all kinds of security compromising info everywhere to sign transactions. So every single developer and app shouldn't have to gain the trust of every individual user. Developers should be creative and add value to the ecosystem while some unprejudiced displays and explains the transactions, the transaction proposals and provide support and where proposed transactions can be rejected or approved by the end user, knowing that we're showing them what they're about to do in a secure and trusted environment. Now, using a mobile app as the go-to trusted user interface for the end user interaction isn't new. We did not have to reinvent the wheel because how does this work in the Web2 world? Take a game, take a web shop, name it. You want something from them, a product, a service, and they want something from you, a payment. So where is the value in the Web2 world? What's the backend for your value? Uh, where's the infra? It's the bank or your payment service provider. And you interact with your bank or payment service provider through their app, through their online banking or payment service provider app. So what if we can provide exactly the same thing that everybody today is already using in the Web2 world, but then in a Web3 context? Fully non-custodial, still your keys, still your crypto. So this is what we envisioned in 2017-18. The XRPL ecosystem had nothing like it, and we built it. So the app and the platform allowed devs to tap into an easy integration between the front end and the back end, between uh, whatever the end user wants to use, the developer wants to build, and the blockchain and the Web3 world. So how can developers and end users interact? Well, some can provide a signed identity your XRPL account, your R address for sign-in and identification. And sign requests can then be delivered through a QR code, a deep link, if you're going from one mobile app to another mobile app or your browser on your mobile to some and back. And through push notifications, if there's a trust relationship between the application of the uh, uh, developer and the end user. So then the, the platform, the, the app, the dev build can asynchronously 
initiate a push notification to the end user and the user can interact with it by signing or declining. And in a variety of environments you're building for the end user. So this is where the title of my keynote starts to make sense. New ways to build on some, because I just shared what we've been doing today and why we've been doing it. I presented the vision I'm now sharing with you in 2018, early stage. We released the first version of our app and platform in 2019, and today we have over 2,000 developers building on our platform, and our app has been installed over 600,000 times by end users all around the world. So new ways to build on some. So what's new? We started out with just having our backend for developers ready for server-to-server -server integrations. It required a server-to-server -server backend integration using an API key and a secret. And if you wanted to get a user to sign a payment, you could do so in just a few lines of code. You have a curl request, you can run this in any Linux or OS X Mac environment where you post to our backend and you include your API key in secret, so you only want to run this on your own infrastructure in your backend. And you include a transaction template. A, this is, for example, a payment with a destination and an amount, and you can leave out a couple of fields that are mandatory if you sign locally. So this is quite simple, right? You get yourself some credentials, you submit a transaction template, uh, the JSON you'd also be able to craft yourself. You send it to our platform and you get to uh, get the end user to interact through a QR, a deep link or a push notification. That's great. And then we build some more libraries for JavaScript developers, C-sharp developers, Python developers, PHP developers, most common things you see on the web today. We're developers too. We need this as well to build our own stuff. And then later we added X apps to allow developers to build their own web apps and showcase them straight from some, straight to all the end users with some in their hands. So end users would open the XApp section in some, fire up an XApp, and then uh, your application adds value for the end user, for some as a platform, and you'd in have an instant six digit audience. And some take care, takes care of the key management and native wallet features. So if you want to allow a user to scan a QR, select and validate a destination account on the XRPL, show transaction details, offer a sign request to reject or sign, you could do so with only uh, a few lines of JavaScript code running on the client side. So then we have recently added features to allow for easy end user sign in and user tokens for further interaction with the end user. And it uses Web2 standards to ship what is considered in the blockchain space today, Web3 functionality. So it's fully client side for a single page web app. There's no backend required, so you don't have to include your secret to your platform anywhere. It's really easy to interact and you can easily use this technology on all existing apps already integrating with external authorization modules and providers. And later uh, uh, on Apex, there will be two guys from the XRPL team, Kuhn and Dominique, who will showcase some of these things. Backend integration by Dominique for uh, an e-commerce environment using Nopcommerce. And in another session, uh, Kuhn will have a development channel for you to build something nice using our client side only OAuth2 sign-in flow to sign in and have users sign a transaction. But this is further down <laughs> Apex. Um, so I, I did this quick walkthrough. It's a uh, five minute, six minute video recording. Uh, you can scan this QR and open it or you can memorize this URL, sum.dev slash three, three ways, where I showcase the, uh, the backend integration with a few lines of code. It's very easy to use and uh, I have the code and a browser and your phone side by side. So you can see what happens for the end user and in your own application. The sum SDK for OAuth, for Web2, uh, uh, um, Web3 hybrid integrations, client side only for single page web apps where you can have users sign in, get their identity, ask them for a sign uh, for a signature. And the XApp SDK where you can build your own uh, XApps or known in the blockchain space as DApps and showcase them straight in sum to the entire XRPL audience. So now I hope you will build amazing things on the XRPL uh, with or without some and without worrying if you build on some without worrying about key management and how end users will interact with your project because we make that really easy. 
so we can together address the developer, user, retail, chicken egg problem. Thank you.